The University of Texas Marine Science Institute is located in Port Aransas, Texas, on the Texas coast, and it's the oldest marine lab in Texas and one of the oldest in the Gulf of Mexico. It's been around for nearly 70 years. The Marine Science Institute is ideally located as a sentinel to uh, pick up signals of climate change as they occur. We're in the right place because we are located right on the border between a tropical climate and a subtropical climate. One of our most significant partners is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Back in 2006, we became the manager of the Mission Aransas National Estuarine Research Reserve. And the Mission Aransas Reserve is one of 27 sites around the country, all doing the same sorts of things. And among the things that they do is monitoring the conditions of the estuaries in which they're located. Partnership is really the cornerstone of the reserve program, both the federal, state, local, and nonprofit organizations. And these partnerships help us address these crucial questions that are facing our coastal communities. And the partnerships are really important to tackling really large issues such as climate change. This is one of four stations that are on platforms like this, and we have a fifth station uh, back at the laboratory out on the pier. We're uh, a National Estuarine Research Reserve. There's 27 of these reserves throughout the country, and each one uses exactly the same protocols for measuring water quality. And so as a result, we make sure that the, the quality of the data is really good, and we all use exactly the same methods all over the country so that we can really detect you know, long and short term changes in water quality uh, and climate related factors. We're already seeing measurable results. Here in Texas, we've seen changes in bird migrations and appearance of new plants that we haven't seen before in this temperature regime. And um, we're also addressing um, other issues that affect the hydrological cycle, so changes in precipitation. There's a really extensive uh, stand of, of black mangroves out here. And one of the other interesting features that we're seeing is the establishment of some red mangroves, which are typically found in more uh, tropical areas. So here we're at sort of the transition zone between what would be considered a typical subtropical habitat and now more and more uh, tropical species are starting to be seen in this area. In addition to the research that's conducted by the Mission Aransas Reserve in partnership with the University of Texas Marine Science Institute, we share an objective of educating the public about marine science and coastal ecology. In addition, we've built a Bay Education Center in a nearby town town of Rockport, Texas. And this center is a wonderful facility that uh, tourists can come and learn about coastal ecology. Today we have a um, school group coming from Moody High School, um, which is in Corpus Christi. And these students are mostly environmental science students. So we're going to do a Science on a Sphere presentation. Uh, science on a Sphere is a, a NOAA product. And we're going to do a presentation for them to show them some modeling of uh, climate change effects. One of the two newest uh, dimensions to our public education program is our Wetlands Education Center. We're going to talk a lot about adaptations and why these areas are so important. Built just a few years ago, we created an artificial marsh on our own site that allows us to give students, but also the general public, hands-on experience in a marsh. Our scientists work not only on local problems here in Texas, but also in places all over the world and many of those projects involve climate change. One of the reasons that the Arctic work is really important is because some of the fastest changes in the climate are occurring in Arctic regions, and so the Arctic is also a sentinel for climate change because that's where the changes may be happening first. I study transport of water and materials in the water from land into the coastal ocean, and I study um, effects of changes in inputs of water and waterborne material um, on the coastal ocean ecosystem. There are two major ways that climate change affects river discharge in the Arctic. The first is through changes in precipitation in the Arctic. As the globe warms, more water is transported to high latitudes to the Arctic part of the world, and that can lead to larger runoff and larger river discharge. The other big part is that permafrost, frozen ground in the Arctic, is thawing, and as that permafrost thaws, water is no longer restricted to flowing across or near the land surface. It can, it can percolate down into the soils deeper and there's less evaporation that happens. One of the other projects I've been working on in the Arctic for the last three decades has been on a very unique kelp bed community in the central Beaufort Sea, Alaska. 
And there's uh, no other community like this for at least a thousand kilometers along, along the, that part of the Arctic coast. This is a fairly unique system. It's an Arctic kelp bed community with an amazing amount of diversity, higher diversity than in, anywhere else on the Beaufort Sea coast. And these plants do all of their growth in the darkness during the winter period. Under the ice is when all the growth takes place. Um, there is no growth during the summer period because nutrients are not available. So it's an amazing strategy of production. It relates basically to the availability of nutrients and the availability of sunlight. We also have researchers working tropical latitudes on climate change issues. For instance, Dr. Luis Rocha is on our staff and he's interested in the biology and distribution of coral reef fishes. There's a lot of corals that don't like very high temperatures, so basically when the temperature gets higher, uh, they get stressed and they expel some microorganisms that live in symbiosis within their tissue, so they lose their color. So we call that coral bleaching. When that happens, uh, sometimes if that, the warm period is not very long, those microorganisms return to their tissue and the, the coral continues uh, living, but uh, sometimes if the warm period is too long, then the coral die and uh, all of the fauna associated with it, which in my case are the fish, they also die because the coral dies. The conservation part of my work involves uh, elaborating the red list of endangered species for the IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature. So they maintain this uh, red list uh, of uh, endangered species and one of the things that I do is uh, get together with several specialists on groups like denso fishes and wrasses and parrotfish and discuss with everybody and conclude which species of those groups should be uh, treated as endangered or not. The University of Texas Marine Science Institute, a resource for Texas, a resource for the world.